Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today is April 13th, 2024, and I'm going to give you guys a garden tour. So people have been wondering what am I growing uh, during the off seasons when the peppers are not in the raised beds. So during the cool months, I grow a ton of vegetables. Uh, some of them grow on their own, uh, some of them I planted myself, but uh, we'll go around and I'll show you everything that I have going on. And uh, if you have any questions about how I grew this, make sure you leave the comment um, in the comment and then I will try to um, maybe make an update video to show you guys how I planted all this. So um, I plant a lot of fruit trees in a very small space, mostly uh, Asian pears, but I also grow persimmons and a few other fruit trees uh, for fun. So before we go through the pears, let me show you some of the plants that I grow in pots first. Okay, so these are the plants that are in pots and they just came out of the garage uh, probably a few weeks ago. And the reason for that is because oranges cannot grow in Texas, North Texas, because the freeze will kill them. And um, that is why they are in pot and uh, kumquats are much much uh, hardier than oranges but because i don't want to lose them um, i still put them in a pot and take them inside because we had a, a freeze a few years ago and it killed uh, one of the kumquats that was in the ground so uh, they can stand cold temperature but below freezing for an extended period they are going to die but the rootstock will not die. <laughs> the, the rootstock may be alive and grow back. But the, these are Miwa. They're awesome kumquat varieties. They're round and um, they're very, very sweet. So uh, if you're in the market for kumquats, there's a few different varieties, but I suggest you get the Miwa because they are the, the sweetest uh, with, with no tartness and uh, they're, they're just great overall. Easy to grow and they produce a lot and some I don't really know the, the when they produce because for my tree they they it just produces like any time throughout the entire year so I have to cut all the fruits off and then it flowers again so <laughs> I don't have I don't have the um, the exact schedule for these these guys yet so uh, yeah those are kumquats and these are sugar apples Sugar apple is a great a fruit variety to grow if you uh, want to grow them in a pot. Uh, they grow very fast, so within two years you can get fruits for them, So, which is very, very fast for fruit trees. And uh, sugar apples are just amazing. And if you have a, a, you know, a good pot size to grow them in, take them inside in the winter, they, they, they're a, a good pot tree to grow. Uh, I have some oranges over there and I grow a lot of aloe vera guys. I mean, I, ha I have so many different varieties. These here, this one, and that one, and that one, those are the um, Barbadensis Miller Stockton, the aloe one variety. And these things are massive and every year they produce a, a gazillion little pubs and I don't really know what, what to do with those guys. Sometimes I pull them out. I, I gave most of them away, but nobody wants them anymore. So, <laughs> you see this? Uh, when you grow aloe, you must take the pubs out because the pubs will drain all the energy from the parent space because, because underneath, they're sharing all the resources. The root systems are all connected. So, uh, if you don't pull the pubs out, the parents don't grow very big, and then the, ba the babies will get bigger and bigger. They, they look all the same. And um, uh, just if you do grow them just pull them all out it's best to have one plant per pot but they produce so many little babies that you will get so many in very little time and so these are my other uh, barbadensis miller and that one there uh, is a variety that i grew in our family for i think 15 years now i don't know the exact varieties but the leaves are massive uh, it's a little flatter than the 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 Barbadensis Miller but um the flesh is very very crunchy it doesn't have any bitterness even if you cut it and uh, open it up right away and eat it uh, very slight bitterness because of the aloin which is the yellow sap but uh, you know if you take the sap out kind of drop them in water and then they don't have any taste at all but these guys here even if you put them in water you know take out all this the yellow sap it's still very very bitter so um, the, these are great for, um, you know, for cooking, 
skin um, you know if you make skincare product or you just put it on when you have sunburn and stuff like that those are great so um, you know yeah look at all these babies that I gotta move out okay so these are my newest addition I just cloned these uh, I don't know the exact name this is just a yellow fig and um, I propagated it from a, a cutting and so now it's growing and I have some uh, Persian lime uh, one avocado tree I'm just playing around with that one really it's they're not meant to be grown in North Texas because in the winter time they'll just die and then here is another one that I propagated from a cutting a long time ago this is the Desert King very nice variety of fig to grow I love it and uh, here's my pear tree these are uh, Shinko pear, but I grafted Korean giant, Hosui, Shinshiki, uh, basically everything that I have in the in the garden on it. And then I'm ha I have chives; those come back year after year after year. I don't have to do anything; they just they just grow. And then sometimes they drop seeds, and then the seeds will grow. And um, yeah, I mean they're um, they grow all over the grass, and I don't care. Cause I just I love them. I, I I just let them grow. I pick them when I want to. And if I don't, they keep growing and keep growing. And these will come back year after year. Uh, even when they're frozen over, uh, the next season they will come right back. As long as the, the, the bottom remain alive, they will come right back. So these are very, very hardy. They, they'll die back in the winter time and then they'll come back in the springtime. They, they love the cool months, so that's how they grow well. And look at how beautiful they are right now. And here is my Motai grafted apple tree. So I have Gala, Red Delicious, Golden Delicious. Um, what else? Fuji. Look at that. Opal. And uh, yeah, they're growing very well. I'm trying to air layer one of it because that tree, that branch is not needed. I even grafted a, a pear onto my apple. Actually, two branches. And that one is having a little fruit right there at the top. And then persimmon. This is a giant fuyu. And I grow these are radishes. They are um, volunteer. So they grew back on their own because this is what happened. I left them like this last season. And uh, I didn't pick the pods. I didn't cut them off. I just left them. And then the, the pods drop the seeds and they grow right back. So guys, if you have not eaten um, radish pods, you should definitely try it. A lot of people don't know that you can eat these. You pick them. See, they're very crunchy and they taste just like radish. So um, eat them. Don't trash them. Uh, sometimes when you grow radishes uh, so late in the, in the hot months, they will bolt very, very quickly. So they don't develop the bulb, the radish bulb, but they will go to flower like this very quickly that's okay let them go to flower you can still eat this they taste very good they're very nutritious you can pickle them you can stir fry them you can eat them raw in a salad they're they're great so um and don't worry if they, they go to seed like this and when they go to seed they're actually one of my, you know my favorite times sometimes i don't even like the bulb i just like the um the radish pods right here because they're they're awesome they taste, taste just like radish and, and they produce a gazillion look at that these are um what is it daikon and man daikon will produce so much you see that and so i will eat this forever and i will not run out because they keep producing more and more and more and more and another thing with radishes is that aphids prefer the radishes over your other plants and so if you grow them next to uh, your other plants like for example I, I grow them next to my peppers and so when I have a aphid problem, which I don't really have anymore, they usually go to the radishes first and they leave my peppers alone. So um, radish has so many benefits. Uh, they will fix your soil, which is one good thing. They will produce a gazillion pots, which you can eat. And uh, they will give you unlimited supply of uh, things to eat. For example, you can eat the leaves. You can eat the bulb, uh, just leave one to go to flower. I have, well, let's see, one, two, three that they, they went to flower and I would never run out of these pods. So uh, yeah, radishes are awesome. And then here I have um, lettuce. 
those are bib and let's see what else uh, miners lettuce my favorite cool we weather vegetable love these things they come back year after year and so after i'm done with them um i just let them go to seed and they'll fall right back and then they seed the next season and they'll grow again in the same spot um, a great thing with these is that they are not affected by uh, you know those flea beetles so flea beetles you see this these are the damages that are caused by the flea beetles and for some reason they love tomatoes and vegetables and stuff like that they they'll they just destroy my um my tomatoes but look at this nothing happens like so not a lot of pests like these things there's a few worms caterpillars that i find once in a while not very often and that's the only uh, problem that i've ever seen and it's not even a problem the worm will eat one leaf and that's it and so those are amazing vegetables i love them grow them all the time and if i can grow them all season i will these are cauliflowers they're probably not going to make it because it's getting very hot now and upland crest love upland crest but now it's getting warm so they're bolting right now so what i usually do is i pick them like this and i'll eat them they're very spicy when they uh, produce these uh, flowers right here uh, when the leaves are younger without the flowers that they're, they're more tender and uh, had a got a more toned down flavor but when they produce these flowers right here the they enhance the flavor and is very very uh, spicy which I, I kind of like much spicier than arugula and then look at all these guys like a sea of perilla or seashell shiso purple shiso and you're probably thinking why am I so crazy to let all these things grow like an ocean of them and uh, there is a reason there's a restaurant that wants all of these and these are all grown organically they're so much better than the store-bought one because I can harvest them at a very young stage and they will have the best flavor the best looking no damage no nothing they're always perfect and so that's why the restaurant want them so there you see that <laughs> they, they do they do grow very fast and the, the advantage of growing sisho or sish shiso perella is that they will seed themselves they're very invasive guys if you if you don't have them in a controlled area they're gonna spread as you can see like wildfire so grow them in a control area uh, if you don't want them to spread pick all of the plants off before they produce flowers and seeds because when they produce flowers and seeds they're like lettuce they will they just everywhere just like this this probably came from one plant as I mentioned earlier, they somebody want these. That's why I let them grow like that. And then in my raised beds, I have arugula, my favorite plants to grow in the cool months also. Everywhere, arugula and wild arugula. And uh, these are mustard. We love mustards. And then my peppers that I overwinter. Look at the size of that trunk. So I took that inside last year but I'm back that's why it has it has a, a head start and here's some um, aloe that I just randomly placed everywhere because I don't have anywhere else to put them they're gonna get massive later and these are uh, I think they're Russian soft neck or something like that garlic and my multi grafted fruit trees that is a shinko lots and lots of fruits you see all those tags those are what I grafted this is the newly grafted and look at that it took already this is old the chojiro I grafted about a year or two ago see the fruits everywhere let me show you and hosui see fruits there are lots of fruits everywhere they kind of blend it in with the, the leaves because they're still green and small but as they get larger, they're gonna have this russet color and then you can see them better. So look at that. Those are Hosui. Uh, Shinko is the base. 
They got Jujiro, Shinsiki, 20th century, basically everything. And here's another multi-grafted tree. Got Korean giant, the big tall one. And then Shinsiki on this side. 20th century right here. Hosui right there, that tall branch with a ton of fruits. Chojiro right in the middle. And uh, more Korean giants that I graft randomly. And here, I'm doing air layering because uh, my, this is a European pear, which is the, the rootstock. Very, very strong variety to graft onto. So if you want to, uh, if your pear tree produces these little sh offshoots here, just let it grow a little bit, air layer them, and then graft something else on top. So each season I get about three or four trees by doing this. I'll show you one that I, I got already from this. And then here some more. I have, let's see, radishes. These are amazing. French breakfast, I love them. You see, I just grow, I just grow them everywhere. I don't even have, a, you know, a, I just place them all over the place. And if they grow, they grow. And uh, I love them. They taste so good. It's very sweet, easy to grow. And, you know, just drop seeds and they will grow on their own. Uh, these are wild arugula. I love wild arugula guys. Um, wild arugula, arugula has many many benefits. It grows in the cool months, it grows in the hot months, it produces a lot of leaves and uh, they produce a lot of seeds too. So uh, you see here these are seeds that I just cut off because if you let them go to seed they'll stop produce, you know, producing leaves. And so if you want them to keep producing leaves just cut the pods or the the seeding part off as, as low as you can and then they will keep producing the leaves and uh, the regular arugula which is rocket those are my favorites you see they're everywhere and so this time of the year I don't really do much because we have a lot of rain and the temperature is cooler so the braised bed doesn't dry up as much so I don't have to water as often and so they they pretty much go in you know grow on their own and then I'll fertilize with the fish fish emulsion like uh, once a month I think I've, I've done it only twice this year and they, they grow just amazing and so I have fresh vegetable basically like uh, anytime I want it fresh and then here's my Korean giant pear I grafted a bunch of other stuff onto it but um, these this is my favorite pear variety they call it Korean giant because the fruits are enormous, much, much larger than the regular, um, you know, Asian pears. So there are lots of them all the way up there. The trees does get very big. So if you grow this, they do get very big, but also they need a pollinator to help um, produce more. I think they will produce on their own, but very little, like, you know, one or two fruit. <laughs> but if you have a pollinator partner, it produces a ton of fruits. I was exaggerating if I said one or two fruit. It produces a little. And then these are upland crests. Uh, what is that? Miner's lettuce. They're about to go to seed. I'm just going to let them go to seed because I want them to grow next year. And so these are just, they, they fall onto the grass. And look at this. Chives. Amazing plants. I love these things. And uh, all you need is one pot. And they just multiply and they'll grow and they'll produce so much leaves for you to use. And these are the where the seeds dropped. So I'm about to have another pot right here of it. And another one, my favorite right here. These are, these are um, what is it? Uh, gosh, I forgot what the name is. I'll put it on the screen once I remember. But the leaves, a sorrel. These are sorrel. French sorrel. I think they're French sorrel. <laughs> And um, they're, they're, you know, the, the leaves are a little limey. They taste very, have a tangy flavor, very limey. We love those things. And they grow really well in the cool months. And also kind of like shaded, they don't like full sun because it'll, it'll harm the leaves. So I put them under the shade of my tree and they do very, very well. And another raised beds with all kinds of stuff. Here's the, the, the lime leaf. We call it lime leaf, but those are sorrel. Cilantro grow like crazy. We're about to have hot weather, so they, they're probably gonna produce seeds pretty soon. 
miners lettuce again love these things grow them everywhere because i eat a lot of them these are so tender and you can eat the entire stock up and down so they're they're very pretty too and they they always look so perfect because again there's not a lot of pests that prefer these things and they they grow in the cool months so there's not a lot of bugs and uh, they're always just beautiful and perfect and then i just love them and again there's more perella seashell shiso i keep getting that the, the word wrong and uh, you see there's purple variety and there's a green purple variety the green one's a little different and so see they're green at the top if you flip them over they're purple you see so these are two different kinds and this one here is purple on top and purple on the bottom so um, those are the two most common ones that the, the Asian stores sell because they love these things. There's soups, uh, dishes that require these things. And then I have persimmons, love persimmons, grow like crazy, produce a ton of uh, fruit all the time. Actually not all the time, but you know, when they produce. See that? One branch you can get like 10 or 20 fruits. But again, if the tree is not ready to produce this much, they will drop on their own. But also, if you let them produce too much, they are going to produce very small fruit because there's no energy from the tree that can be fed to them because the tree is young. So if the tree is bigger, they produce better. <laughs> and so you see, they, they will drop see, you know, the fruit on their own if, they don't, if they're not able to carry them all. But they always overproduce and then they drop a lot. But if they drop, don't, don't be alarmed. That's just a nat natural habit. They will drop some. And then here's another one. This is a giant Fuyu. You see, this is a smaller tree. So there's fruits there, not as many. So they, they, then you see, this branch is only has one. That one has brand one. The other branch, you know, they have a, a ton like this but it will drop some because you see how, how small the branch is it's not going to be able to carry all those fruits and then i'm i was doing work in the garden so that's why all these things are here i got another fuyu that i started this is a pear tree that i grew from seed and then i grafted all kinds of stuff into it you see it's it's it's, it's about under two feet tall and look at this guys fruits you know like that and here's fruits right here and then there's fruits right here they're all different varieties and uh it's a, just a fun project i'm working on you see how i train the tree branches to, to come out like that and each it, so if you grow them in a container you can do that and i, I recommend you do that because you want to spread the, the branches outward and allow airflow to go into the middle that way you don't get diseases and all that stuff and it's good for the plant anyway to get light through here the more light the plants can get through the better the fruits and the sweeter the fruits but also it's better for the plant to get airflow to go through those and then more minus lettuce i love these things and then wild arugula so here's the advantage of wild arugula guys if you grow wild arugula they will fix your soil but they will also help with erosion and the reason i said that is because the arugula the tap root is two to three feet all the way down there if you, if you try to pull an arugula plant that is fully grown like this one here i just trimmed it there's no way you can pull this thing up you have to dig it up let me let me try it and i'll show you so you see that see see the root didn't come out let me try to pull it see it broke you see that so the root is very very deep down there so if you have an area in your garden that erodes very very easily put arugula there wild arugula it'll fix the soil it'll keep it from eroding and also you can eat it <laughs> which is an advantage and they grow very very fast they're delicious plants and uh, produce a ton of leaves for you to use and so this area right here was having issues with you know soil just running off and so you see this here see so I plant a bush right there now the soil is stuck it can't go anywhere and also because the roots are so deep 
and then when the arugula die back there's so much organic matter from the roots that can feed the plants once everything decomposed down so it's it's an awesome variety of plants to grow again you know you can eat them they they'll keep your soil nice and the taproot is very, very long, so you don't have to feed these plants very much. It'll go get their own water, it'll go get their own nutrients. And so, um, also, again, in the drought, grow wild arugula in places that's really dry. They will do much better than the rocket arugula and other um, vegetables. And same with here. So my, my soil was running off, you see? And so I, you see that part right there? When the rain comes, it just keeps running off. And now that I placed the arugula here, it started growing. I, I have weeds, but that's okay. But um, it, it'll, you know, it'll choke out the weeds if you grow the arugula. And also, it keeps the soil from running off. And it, it'll, it'll fix this area so that uh, you can get very, very nice uh, soil very soon. They grow very fast. More aloe. I don't know what to do with it, so I left, I just grow them everywhere. And then finally, I have a raised bed of asparagus. These asparagus are enormous, guys. They're as big as my thumb now. And so I, the thing with asparagus is it's a commitment. You have to grow the plants for like three years to get them to grow this, this size. You see? And uh, if you buy them at, uh, you know, your stores, when you bring them home, this is what they look like. So thin. You see? These are my new ones. And uh, you have to let them grow into little ferns. Because if you eat the thin plants, then you'll kill it. <laughs> they, they won't grow much. So you got to let them grow up to these little ferns right here. And then in the winter, they'll die back. And their root system will expand and get bigger and bigger. And once after you leave them for a few years, then you will get shoots the size of this that come up and so I'll let a few grow and I'll harvest a few to eat a few of them to eat so this one here I will harvest it later uh, they grow fast so you know you if you forget them for like two or three days they'll they'll get this tall and then everything will be very tough and so uh, when they get to like you know a foot long you can still harvest them and they're very nice and so asparagus again they take a lot of time so um, I've seen a video where they grow these asparagus in a pot and it shows like maybe two months or three months and they get enormous asparagus. I don't know what type of asparagus they're using, but I've never been able to get those spears that big in three months. So uh, yeah, you have, you have to be careful what videos you watch. So uh, anyway, that is it for the garden tour. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty long right now, but I have a lot going on and uh, Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.